two gentlemen, uh, Ivan Mortimer Schutz and Manish Devan, uh, who represent the ASEAN Financial Innovation Network, uh, which is an entity formed by the MAS, uh, the World Bank, uh, World Bank Group's International Finance Corporation, and the ASEAN Bankers Association. Uh, these gents are on an ambitious journey to bring financial institutions and fintechs closer. As part of a not-for-profit entity, their objective is to help re reduce the friction that exists today in the path to digital transformation. So uh, we will bring them on stage now. So welcome, Ivan. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you very much. Can you hear me Wonderful. all right? I can. Okay, good. Good afternoon. Fantastic. Um, I'm just going to wait a second here to see if Manish jumps on. Uh, he'll need to uh, click on the button that says uh, join via web and audio or something of that sort on the top right. That's okay. Well, why, why don't we get started perhaps? And uh, the moment Manish clicks the button, I'll, I'll add him. Here uh, and I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you run, Ivan. Great, thank you very much. So I just make sure I'm sharing the appropriate screen here for you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just go. wait. Wait for you. There you go. You're all set. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so first of all, thank you very much for this invitation. I should just clarify. So I'm I'm from the um, the World Bank Group from the IFC. Um, and I wanted to share a few sort of perspectives with the audience about financial inclusion and why um, the API economy and, and the financial institutions around it are extremely important. And then I will hand over to, to my colleague um, Manish, who, who leads the AFIN, um, the APEX platform, and he'll tell you a little bit more from a pragmatic uh, perspective what's being done across the region to help some of these um, objectives of financial inclusion to be achieved. And, and I think we'll still have time, hopefully at the end, for a few questions. Um, Manish, are you on now? Yes, I think I am. Good, I can hear you, great. Right. Um, okay, so I mean, I think just to get started, this, you know, the, the audience we have here, of course, is pretty familiar um, in the, with the API Economy, and I guess it's not any news to anybody, you know, that we've been following this from the IFC and World Bank perspective, um, you know, not just from afar in developed markets, but of course here in, in Southeast Asia in particular, as well as less developed markets. Um, you know, we've seen a real proliferation of, um, of digital services that use APIs as part of their operations. And a lot of the more successful and, and visible ones, of course, are run by what we might call semi-closed ecosystems, um, you know, the likes of Grab and Gojek here in the region, but globally there are many more, um, that do a lot of their work internally um, and they connect to the financial sector, sometimes uh, bilaterally, sometimes they're creating some of their own financial services internally. Um, and probably, you know, over in general, you know, we expect that larger corporations have a better chance of coordinating API integrations between financial services that they have control over than with a broad or open ecosystem. But as the market is now growing really exponentially in terms of the number of actors, in terms of the nodes, as it were, in the network, the functions and a lot more functions are becoming increasingly disaggregated. Here, you know, here's a slightly hypothetical example from trade finance. You're in seeing increasingly a much more complex environment where you don't have just a few bilateral connections between different functions and institutions, but you have multiple connections. Um, and as the ecosystem grows, those the, the number of nodes, the number of degrees, and, and what we call the cohesiveness of those networks grows certainly, you know, perhaps not exponentially, but it, the growth rate is a lot more than linear. And that's starting to create a lot of challenges for market openness, control, and robustness. And probably, you know, it'd be interesting to hear from the audience. It's probably also creating a lot of a, a lot more in the way of operational and technical challenges to maintain stability in these new products and services. Um, 
And this is not really a surprise for us because, you know, we, we look at the financial services sector from the IFC and World Bank perspective, and we're beginning to see, um, you know, a real proliferation in the kinds of services and the kinds of firms that are seeking to integrate themselves in some shape or fashion with the financial sector. So what you see here briefly in this pie chart um, represents the diversity of the institutions that have now been authorized in the European Union um, to provide what they call account information services. Um, and this, you know, the variety of services you see here is quite interesting um, in terms of it being, you know, not just consumer oriented apps for ma managing your budget, but you see a growing array of other providers around consent management, uh, identity, um, credit reporting, um, accounting firms, ERP systems. You know, there's, this is just one small snapshot of companies that have been authorized in the EU, where it's a little bit easier to track who is actually active in this sector. But of course, we know that in markets from Brazil to Indonesia to Korea, you know, um, and even in smaller markets here, closer to Singapore, there is just a real growth in the variety of companies that are trying to, in one shape or other, integrate with financial services and, and also a, a can sort of push towards um, more open frameworks and to some extent more standardization. Um, so, so with that, we start to see you know, a number of challenges appearing, not just at the firm level, but at the overall market level, um, you know, driven by the number and variety of services. Um, and in particular, you know, there are important consequences for that part of the market that we're focused on, which tends to be the underserved or, or even underbanked market segments for consumers and SMEs. A lot of these new service providers are interested and capable of improving on the way that financial services reach those target markets, but it's not always straightforward in the smaller markets and in markets where um, the ecosystems are not grown in a more open fashion. Um, and a lot of the firms that are actually driving this growth are not so much uh, financial institutions themselves. What, what we see happening as an important trend is that the business case is really driven by companies outside of the financial sector. So here, you know, just a few examples, um, you know, especially with COVID, we've seen a rapid growth in very, very small local merchants trying to quickly establish both a offline as well as an, and an online presence to complement their, their space in the street with an online presence that works as well as what they're used to. Um, and that's driving a lot more in the way of customer activity onto things like WhatsApp and Line and other chat lines and driving a lot more e-commerce basically into the overall network. Um, we're seeing now a pr profusion of service providers focused on the supply side of these small merchants, um, helping them to maybe place their orders with suppliers more easily. And in relation to that, building up a credit history or at least a track record that can be used to expand access to finance for working capital, for example. Um, these companies are now also increasingly working with e-logistics. Um, the e-logistics firms are bringing smaller um, firms with vehicles or warehouses online and helping to optimize some of the economies around um, physical infrastructure which is also a very important factor in promoting growth um, and financial inclusion. And many of these firms, you know, even if they do honestly run several, several accounting books, um, we do see now a real uptake in the use of enterprise software on the cloud to, to help even smaller um, and smaller companies, merchants um, and firms locally. And that's, also, of course, integrating increasingly with payment services um, so that customers can actually get paid, uh, manage their own financial affairs, and also use that data to improve their, um, their terms on which they might be able to access credit. Um, so that's what really drove us also, I mean, the anticipation of those sorts of challenges 
That's what kind of also pushed us on the World Bank side to help create AFIN and the APEX platform. Because with that growth in the variety and strength of um, different actors in the digital economy, we increasingly are challenged on the policy side with a few key questions. Uh, first of all, the access regime. So we are familiar with the ongoing work in the region on open banking frameworks, uh, which are you know, asking, among other things, questions about how we regulate, if at all, um, which kinds of firms should be able to have access to banking data, either on a read-only or also on a write capacity. Um, what the eligibility criteria are going to be in order to protect the overall integrity, not just of the market, but of course, to try and protect some of the users of the financial system that may not be in a good position to uh, vouch for the security and credibility of actors. Um, there are also, alongside those safety and security concerns, growing questions about how easy it is for smaller firms to access the market. Um, to compete and be parts of the ecosystems that early on are often dominated by a few smaller firms with integrated silos. And as this part of the digital financial economy becomes bigger, um, policymakers, in particular um, regulators and supervisors, are also increasingly going to have to look at to what extent the systems are reliable and robust. Um, and to the extent to, to see what extent what we can do to ensure that different nodes in the overall chain, um, when they fail, do not necessarily lead to real consequences for consumers. Um, and then the third level of debate, which of course is also very prominent in this type of um, you know, this type of event, is the direction of travel for standards, functional standards processes to the extent that they may be controlled by central institutions. Um, we're having increasingly debates about open APIs in the banking sphere and what formats and messaging standards and API standards should be used to ensure interoperability. And there are growing debates around what the minimum technical and security standards should be. And these are all policy driven, but ultimately the answers to a lot of these questions are very practical. And that's what really brought us to work with APICS on this as an ecosystem in which banks, fintechs, and increasingly an array of other providers could come together to not learn through PowerPoint, but learn through doing and be able to share in a systematic way some of the experience and issues they're confronting as these ecosystems grow with the policymakers and infrastructure providers that really need to ensure that the ecosystem grows over time. Um, so that's kind of where, you know, I think it's worthwhile now to, to hand over to Manish, and I hope he'll be able to explain to you a little bit more about what the APEX platform is and how it kind of continues in this, in this line of thought towards achieving practical results. Thank you. Thanks, Ivan. So uh, just on to the next slide. So, you know, picking up from where uh, Ivan left, uh, you know, what we... What the regulator, which is MAS and uh, World Bank, IFC, and ASEAN Bankers Association, came together on the on the same side of things uh, back in 2017, late 2017, early 2018, was the fact that you know the road to collaboration, although it is a very important buzzword, you know, collaboration, innovation, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, sounds all very fancy. Uh, fact on the ground remains that it is a very, very long, winding, full of friction road, even today even with the biggest of the banks and even on the smallest of the geographies, right? And these are some of the problems that they were trying to tackle. Uh, Ivan included, he was part of the original team which uh, got together on the table, which was limited market uh, access to build credibility for fintechs. They didn't really have credibility. No big banks wanted to touch them. Long and long sales and prototyping cycles, you know, it used to take about six to 14 months on an average to close sales deals. Uh, 15 to 20 meetings to do just one prototype. Now imagine a small fintech with 10 people, very capable, very bright, brilliant product, have to do 20 meetings per financial institution, per geography. There is literally no scope for them to survive after maybe six, eight, 12 months. It's not going to happen. And then after you go through all this, 
there was still only 10 to 20 percent chance of you having a successful product on the table uh, on, on your resume on your product profile uh, after going through so many troubles and all this trouble would cost you quarter of a million dollars literally in just door to door knocking sales with no intended result as yet next slide please so that is where apex uh, was conceptualized and brought to reality apex is the world's first open innovation platform on cloud what we have is uh, our, our absolutely important critical part of the innovation piece which is the uh, public sandbox uh, this sandbox sits in the middle which allows for all the brilliant experiments that a lot of our financial institution and fintech community have been doing for almost a year and a half now i will bring you to those in a bit and this sandbox is not a, just a standalone offering from apex what we have built is an ecosystem of services around this which includes a global fintech marketplace currently we host close to about 320 plus fintechs on the apex uh, global fintech marketplace we also have another 1000 on our catalog who have participated with us in various hackathons that we have been doing for uh, since covid has come into play uh, besides the global fintech marketplace we also provide uh, synthetic data and connector apis out of box uh, from the apex platform for every participating member now data was you know sharing data was something that was supposedly you know the big thing and no bank wanted to let go of their data uh, and we thought that you know this is one of the friction point that needs to be addressed and that's why apex today proudly hosts close to about 3 million rows of banking grade uh, data on it uh, for our fintech community to come and utilize for our financial institutions to come and utilize without having to worry about running around their information security guys that please allow me to do this experiment let me use my data what we have also built uh, is a brilliant community of uh, flag bearers of uh, technology uh, innovation collaboration we host close to about 2000 plus community members on on two community forum one is the apex internal member community which is meant for apex members and then there is an opex apex open community uh, which is open for any uh, any uh, buddy who has any interest in fintechs and financial institution and technology in general and the fifth part is the solutions catalog which we are still building uh, we host close to about 15 to 20 solutions already on board wherein this is essentially your for lack of a better word uh, you know like a linkedin for your solution so if you are a fintech who is interested in creating a brilliant catalog for what you do please come on to apex upload your solution on the solutions catalog and next time when you have to send because of covid you can't travel and when you have to send your uh, presentation uh, which is just, just a slide uh, when you want to send your uh, product to somebody in some bank in vietnam or or cambodia or wherever it is just send this link with the solutions catalog which displays your solution end to end you can upload it here next slide please so apex is 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 for the global ecosystem of fintechs it's built for whether you are a chatbot whether you are a uh, you know machine learning business whether you are a deep learning business whether you are a trading business whether you are a aml kyc reg reporting etc 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 it's it helps you collaborate with banks commercial banks insurance companies <clears throat> central banks system integrators investors so the the point is that you know apex stands in the middle to handhold these two not so uh, you know coming together sort of uh, entities because it takes a lot of time otherwise to, for them to come together you know if you were to individually as a financial institution if you were to individually go and talk to every kyc service provider for the kyc problem that you are having is going to be a long long time before you actually speak to everyone you could rather come to apex and look at the 15 16 18 kyc service providers that are already on board next slide please <coughs> sorry how you utilize apex you could use it as a business development opportunity as for speedy prototyping for brand exposure for hackathons uh, for investment opportunities or for learning and development you know two things that we have uh, really recently done is you know the hackathon which we call as the hackolysium uh, we have hosted some of the biggest names of hackathons in the uh, for the past uh, you know four months 
uh, the D20 tech sprint with Bank of International Settlement, Innovation Hub, uh, Singapore, uh, UNCDF Financial Health Challenge, uh, MAS Accelerator, MAS uh, Global FinTech Awards, uh, and few more that are in the pipeline as we speak. You will hear from us very, very shortly in next couple of weeks on some very large uh, ticket uh, hackathons that are going to be organized. On the investment side, we realize that there is a there's a need for fintechs to be handholded uh, when COVID hit. They were not able to do few things. One, they were not able to reach out to businesses, to financial institutions to sell their products and services. So we brought hackathons to them so that they're able to showcase it. Uh, the other part was the investment part. Investment had two layers. Uh, one was short term investment uh, requirement, you know, debt requirement for paying salaries, et cetera, et cetera. Wherein we, we have currently, uh, we are we are doing what we call as a business growth grant through our uh, board members MAS, AMTD, and our uh, advisory council member uh, Singapore FinTech Association. It's it's open for all Singapore FinTechs, and uh, the AMTD ASEAN Investment Fund, which is meant for all uh, ASEAN-based FinTechs as an investment opportunity. Next slide, please. And these are some of the names that uh, currently. Uh, are very proudly hosted on the Apex platform and are actively working with some of the fintechs that you see there uh, to do their day-to-day -day requirements on multiple, multiple categories. And these are just some of the names. Uh, like I said, you know, we host 320 plus fintechs and about 50 plus financial institutions. Next slide, please. And behind Apex is, uh, AFIN is this very critical uh, you know, set of organization who build the Apex uh, community. Uh, Apex in, uh, in itself, uh, it's me as an employee and another employee, right? And all these other fantastic organizations is what brings AFIN to you, uh, Apex to you, which includes uh, our public interest founding members, ASEAN Bankers Association, IFC and MAS, uh, also our corporate founding members, AMTD Foundation and MasterCard, and the Strategic Advisory Council, which is essentially our eyes and ears on the ground uh, from a commercial aspect, including you know names like BNY Mellon, AWS, Experian, Mastercard, SFA, and so on and so forth. Uh, just a couple of more slides on some of the things that we are doing right now. Next slide, please, Ivan. So, yes, you've got two minutes, Manish. Sure. Uh, these are the two things that I just spoke about: SFA grant scheme and the Solidarity Investment Scheme. We invite you to come and look at uh, the Apex platform to know more about it. Next slide. And my final slide would be, uh, as, as a fintech community member, when you come on board Apex, you're also eligible for up to 25,000 uh, USD worth of AWS cloud credit, depending upon AWS uh, criteria, and some of our other things that we keep on doing, like this Ascenda Sendbridge uh, office space discounting. Uh, reach out to me. My name is Manish Devan. Uh, you can find me at uh, manish at afin.tech. Uh, Please happy to help in whatever best way that I can, whether you are a fintech or a financial institution. Cool. This is actually quite quite fascinating. Um, spent a bit of time at DBS, and um, uh, I, I saw DBS was not one of the logos you had on, so I'm kind of curious uh, to go back and ask about that. Just the dotted line, perhaps next week. <laughs> sure. Fair enough. Cool. We've got one question from the audience. Um, uh, the question is, which one works better from a customer service perspective? The EU model of well-regulated and standardized, or even mandated like uh, uh, open banking aspects, or the Singapore model of industry-driven open banking? Or is it just a matter of maturity that drives mm. regulations? Oh, boy. Mm. The jury's still out on that one, I think. Um, <laughs> I think, I mean, I think the, the you know, more seriously, I think the, the fundamental issue is driven by uh, a, an estimation by policymakers of how much competition and innovation there is in the domestic financial system. So if you have a market which is already very diverse, um, with a lot of market-based finance, bank-based finance, and is quite liberal in terms of how different fintech actors can come in. Um, you know, you may not need to mandate, but in markets that are dominated, let's say, by a very strong monopoly of a small number of financial institutions, the policymakers have often, if they can, taken the decision to effectively loosen up the the joints in that financial sector to let in some new players and to shake things up, so to speak. 
but it's a we're looking at a 10-year process i think in most <laughs> markets and we're probably you know even in the most advanced markets you know you're probably at year at best year three and a half Singaporeans do not like to wait for 10 years. That's <laughs> they right. Not That's right. Now. That's right. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, gents, thank you so very much for uh, for your time and for your presentations. Uh, uh, I certainly learned a lot, and I appreciate that there's this really nice bridge between uh, a large financial institution and the and the fintech world. Uh, so that's that's really nice to see. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people reaching out to you. Thanks. 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 Thank you very much. Fantastic. So